Welcome. I'm Joanne Dankwa from One Agency, JD Property Agents, and I think it's really lovely to find time to talk to Diane Chalk from Hill Ross Ferry Meadow. Diane is, I think, the best person to talk to about aged care and the transition for people going or considering moving from their family home into aged care. So, I, I don't know about you, Diane, but it just seems to overwhelm me. And I see that with people when I go and sit with them and they really feel confused. So, have you got some tips for them to consider when they're looking at going into aged care? So, what should they think about? Well, firstly, most people don't plan. Mm. Normally, it's an event. Um, you know, someone has a fall or, you know, they notice that, you know, mum's, you know, putting the magnums in the pantry instead of the freezer. So it's more observation, but also um, because it's an event, people are emotional. So they're in hospital, so they've, you know, it's the panic of moving them into somewhere. Mm. So my tips would be to start observing your family or your loved ones, their behaviour and making sure that are they coping or is it just a cover up? And then maybe um, in advance, get, a, get an assessment from the aged care assessment team or, or short ACAT. Um, you can arrange that through the doctor. My, my tip is definitely get one. Get an assessment whether you think you need it or not. It's like having a passport. Mm. <laughs> Just because you have one doesn't mean you're going to travel overseas. Yeah. But it's also um, assessment for home care, okay. respite and also um, permanent care. So is there an age that you think that, well, I'm at this age, maybe I should think about getting this assessment done? Uh, no, not necessarily. I think, you know, again, just observation of the family member, you know, are they coping at home? Um, you know, just making sure that, you know, they're, and also then, you know, that's the first step is, is talking about it openly with the family, you know, what sort of extra care rather than the family members, um, and making sure then that they can get, a, get an assessment, then maybe get a, a short list of places to have a look at. Uh, so, you know, maybe the area, the type of needs, whether it's, you know, dementia or Alzheimer's or whether it's physical. So then if the time comes, or when, more like when the time comes, mm -hmm. they're at least got a short list of places that they, and then they can have a look at what's the cost because the cost can be exorbitant. So there's lump sum costs, they're refundable deposits or RADs for short. Um, the ongoing costs, uh, so it's really important to, and then my role is how do I, you know, explain how to fund it. But respite's also a good way to, you know, help the family out. Yeah. It's more about the carer, yeah. um, and also they can try before they buy. Yeah, I think that's really, really important. And I know that with my grandparents, when they got sick, yeah. um, it, we were reacting rather than being proactive, and yeah. it was very stressful oh, on the whole family. It's extremely. I, yeah. I can't tell you how stressful the whole process, process is yeah. emotionally without the complexity of the financial side. And that, for me, I love it. That's my absolute yeah. passion is because I can offer a solution instantly mm. to mm. most families who've got no idea mm. where, to, where to start, you mm. know, how do we pay for this? And it's really not about the cost. It's finding a facility that will take care of your loved one for the rest of their days yeah. and, and then we'll work out how to fund yeah. it. Yeah. I think you and I both have a passion for the elderly yeah. and looking after them because they're, I believe, very vulnerable. Very, you yeah. Know? So, you know, I think it's the planning side of things is very, very important. Yeah. So yeah. I really appreciate you coming and oh, talking to pleasure. us and um, just letting us know to be careful of those things, you know, getting the assessment done, um, looking at what options are available, yep. what the costs are associated with that, being prepared. Yep. Very important. <laughs> Very important. And okay. also their estate planning, making sure mum and dad or nana or whoever's will's up to date yep. and extremely important to have mm. powers of attorney and enduring guardianships, otherwise most facilities won't accept yep. them. And you want to do that before they get to the stage where they think that you think there's something going on and you're taking away the power. Absolutely. Yep. And also, if they don't, then guess what? The New South Wales government will take control. Ah, oh, really? So, yep. Oh, that's, that's So if they, want, if they do nothing and have nothing in place, then potentially the government will be stepping in and, okay. and managing their financial affairs. So okay. I can't stress enough, before you need it, power of attorney and during guardianship. Okay.
Well, thank you. My pleasure. Wonderful talking to you. Yeah, thank you. For more tips and hints, go to our website, joanne.com.au.